Hey, hey, Rita Johnston here, certified life coach and Reiki practitioner. I am truly excited to be on with you tonight and to be a part of the Integrate Network and to talk about uh, trauma-enforced life coaching and Reiki. So tonight is part one of three. Tonight I'm going to be talking about setting the tone for um, a coaching and Reiki session, what a trauma-informed session looks like, and I'll leave you with uh, some basic steps that you can take to incorporate in your own practice and things that you can do in your day-to-day -day life. So if you do hop on, uh, feel free to join the conversation, post questions, interact. Um, but I will go ahead and jump right in. So <clears throat> as I said, today is part one, and today I'm going to be talking about setting the tone and what that looks like for a trauma-informed uh, coaching and Reiki session. So setting the tone and creating safe space actually starts before the client gets to the office. It starts with the intake form. It starts with asking questions. It starts with uh, being open and bringing up the conversation of triggers and sensitivities, asking the client in the intake form, how are things showing up physically, environmentally, uh, mentally, emotionally? And these are also things that we can do in our day-to-day -day life, just really check in what's going on in our environment. How is this showing up in my body? Uh, are my muscles tight? Uh, offering metaphors is uh, something that I like to do on the intake form because sometimes with um, those that have experienced trauma, there may be a hard time uh, putting words and putting uh, words to emotion, putting words to feelings. So really uh, using metaphors helps to ground and really connect with your body. So what's going on in your world, uh, a metaphor might be, it feels like a, a hammer hitting the nail. Um, so that is something that I like to do on the intake form, just various ways of opening the doors to communication for you to really kind of see and get an overall bird's eye view of what is going on with the client. And again, these are things that we should be doing in our everyday life that just really help us to connect with the things that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis and how we process those things, how they affect us emotionally, and mentally. Uh, next, so when we are, once we get done the intake form, when we begin the session, so the intake is done long before the client gets to the office. Now the client is at the office and something that I find really, really important to do, especially when working with um, those that have experienced trauma, is getting a brief history, setting the intention, uh, getting clear expectations for moving forward and really meeting the client where they are. And again, this goes for us just as humans in day-to-day -day life, meeting people exactly where they are. So what I mean when I say that is well, I may have a client come in that has had a certain experience and I may have another client that has had a very similar experience. Each of those may have processed that experience in a different way. So really meeting the person where they are, no expectations, no assumptions, not assuming that where you are today is where you were the last time we met. Um, checking my notes because I want to make sure that I don't miss anything. Uh, oh, one of the questions that I get quite often is, what is coaching? Is it like therapy, counseling, or what is that? So coaching is about moving forward versus reliving and revisiting the past experiences. Anything that we've all had those experiences that we can't unexperience. We've all seen things that we can't unsee. And so all of those have made us who we are. And so when working with someone who has experienced trauma, um, 
it's really important to be mindful and to be very particular about the questions that we ask. And this is something that, again, in the intake form, using metaphors, asking specifically, do you have any known triggers? Do you have any sensitivities to smell? Do you have any sensitivities to touch? So we don't really need to dive into exactly what happened um, unless it's imperative to moving forward. But getting clear on where are you right now? You've had these experiences. How has it affected you? What's going on with you right now? Where are you now? And then where are you wanna be? So that is what coaching is geared towards because I get that question a lot. Um, it's not really a lot about talking about the past trauma, the past experiences. Um, but again, I bring this up because sometimes when people are in session, things come up. Sometimes when clients are laying on the massage table for Reiki, things come up. So they may be things that uh, they could be triggers that the client was not aware that the experience happened. Maybe it was a repressed memory and all of a sudden, here we are in session, full blown, we are triggered. Here we are in session, full blown, we now have a memory. So it's really important in trauma-informed coaching and trauma-informed Reiki, have a list of resources available. Know what is in your scope of practice. Know when to refer out. Uh, being aware of the warning signs of triggers, being aware of um, a client, if they're on the Reiki table, for example, being aware of muscle tension, of twitches, shallow breathing, changes in breathing, and really uh, opening the door and being open to asking those questions and being intentional with those questions and knowing when to refer out. Uh, it's always important for the client to know that uh, this is a safe space. So even if I can't help you I or aid you in wherever it is that you're trying to go, I still have a list of resources um, to help guide you along the way. So always keeping that list handy during sessions. And uh, I also want to touch on some of the things that can happen when someone has experienced trauma, as I had mentioned before, uh, having trouble putting words to emotion or words to feelings and offering um, something that I like to offer with my clients, both Reiki and coaching, is offering a piece of paper to jot down some notes, um, offering a journal, offering the colored pencils and the markers to maybe draw out some of the things that are showing up in the body. Uh, hey, hey, to draw out some of the uh, things that may be showing up uh, environmentally, maybe there's a stiff neck, maybe your left knee hurts. So offering alternative methods to expression versus just talking and asking questions and being verbal. So it's really important to know that um, the, the various ways that trauma can show up and the various methods to talk through and, and get to uh, the other side of a to B. Here we are. Here's where we want to be. Uh, so I want to switch gears for a little bit here. Uh, we've been talking a lot about coaching, and I want to touch on Reiki um, specifically because Reiki is a little bit more hands-on. Coaching is something that can be done by phone. Uh, coaching is something that can be done in person. Reiki can be too, but um, I want to talk about Reiki because specifically Lying on the massage table can be a huge trigger. Having someone place their hands on you can be a huge trigger. And so there's lots of things that I like to incorporate in my practice. Um, that, And these are things that you can incorporate in yours as well. They're pretty simple. They're pretty basic. But they, again, are just setting the tone. We're creating safe space before the session. We're creating safe space during the session. So um, if you're not familiar with Reiki, I want to give you a really brief description of what it is just so that you have an idea as I'm talking through some of the things uh, that I do when working with um, clients that have been through trauma. 
So Reiki is a Japanese uh, technique for stress reduction, and uh, it's a relaxation technique, and it promotes healing in the body. So the way that it was explained to me before I became a Reiki practitioner is think of when you have a paper cut and your body can naturally heal itself. So you have a paper cut, a couple weeks later, it's gone, it's healed. So Reiki essentially is the same thing. It's speeding up the healing um, process in your body. We've all had experiences. We've all gone through some emotional distress. We've all had things happen to us, and these things can cause blockages in the body. So Reiki helps to relieve these blockages emotionally, mentally, physically. So with that being said, part of the process of Reiki is to have traditionally is to have the client lay on the massage table and um, I will lightly place my hands on them, on their skin. So when working with a client that has experienced trauma, it's really, really important. I cannot stress this enough. I'm gonna overstress it. It is really, really important to make sure that the client knows they are in full control and they have a choice and a say in everything. And when I say full control, I am talking, I reiterate throughout the session, if you're uncomfortable for any reason, please let me know immediately. Please let me know right away if something feels uncomfortable. Please let me know right away if uh, something comes up for you. Please let me know right away if I put my hand somewhere that you do not like. Please let me know right away if you need to get up, if you need to use the restroom, whatever it is. Just letting the client know, let me know right away if anything comes up for you. I promise you my feelings will not get hurt. I do not take it personally uh, because, again, some of the things that uh, I see in those, those of us that have experienced trauma is we may not want to say anything for fear of hurting the other person. We may not want to um, hurt the other person's feelings. We may feel shame. We may feel guilt. There's all kinds of things that could happen. So really just reiterating, please let me know. My feelings will not be hurt. Um, you are in full control. If you need to stop the, ses the session, we can stop at any time. Um, I like to walk the client through exactly what to expect with each and every session. Um, so just not knowing what to expect, what is coming up can trigger anxiety. It can trigger panic attacks. So at the very beginning of the session, I like to be very, very clear and say we have 60 minutes today. We're gonna to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes to talk about what is going on for you, how it's showing up. Then we'll walk over to the massage table if that's okay with you. So really breaking down and giving the client um, the time frame of this is what I have worked out for us. This is, this is how our 60 minutes will go. And then also giving that choice. Does that work for you? How does that feel to you? Um, is lying on the massage table okay? Giving and offering alternatives. So if someone does not want to lay on the massage table, having a chair available. Um, offering Reiki, sitting up versus laying down. Again, laying down could be a trigger. Um, offering and asking, and, and letting the client know, first off, that they will be fully clothed. Um, asking, would you like me to put my hands directly on you, or would you like a blanket uh, as a barrier? Would you like to lay face down? Would you like to lay face up? Um, there's, a, there's a huge power of touch, and touch can be a trigger. Um, Non-touch can be a trigger. So just, just letting the client know, keeping them aware of what's going on, and always making sure to present things as options and give them choices versus this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna lay on the massage table face down. I'm gonna do this. So put the client in control is really, really huge uh, when working with those that have experienced trauma. And reassuring, I'm constantly reassuring throughout the session that the safest space, the, the safest space, the space is safe. Um, the doors are locked. Again, ask for what you need at any time. And I let them know that during a Reiki session, my eyes are closed. I am 
not looking at anything. I am placing my hands where they need to go. I am being in tune. I don't want um, them to think I'm sitting there watching them. So just keeping the client aware of what's going on. And something that we can do in our daily life with this is just being aware of our surroundings and being aware of, um, of our options, of our choices, and not feeling stuck, not feeling as though we don't have a choice. Um, another tip for creating safe space and setting the tone during a coaching and Reiki session is acknowledgement. Acknowledgement is huge. I, I personally think that uh, we don't get acknowledged enough in this world for some of the good that we do. And I know that there are a lot of people that don't get, they have a hard time acknowledging themselves because it's not something that they've experienced receiving. So acknowledging throughout the session, um, acknowledge, you know, it's, it takes a lot to reach out to someone and say, hey, I need help getting my life together. Hey, I need help working through some stuff. Hey, I have this going on in my life. So really just placing acknowledgement um, back on the client. And the last thing that I want to share today um, on creating safe space is ego check. Checking the ego is big. I can't stress it enough. Um, as service providers, we are vessels. We are here to do work. And so I really feel that it's important to put the client in the driver's seat and let them know that we are facilitators to their work. I am not here to shame what happened to you. I am not here to blame or judge where you are. I am here to help you find your own voice and help you be a, help and be a guide to help you get to where you need to be. So oftentimes this may be the first time that the client is being seen for who they are in this moment. Uh, this may be the first time that they're being heard. This may be the first time that they are saying some of the things that are important to them. So creating safe space for the client to be able to open up and talk through these things and feel through these things and acknowledge these things is important and to not hold them to who they were. And it's important to constantly create safe space. I mentioned earlier doing this each and every time. And just because I saw a client last week, we change each and every day. We change each and every hour. And sometimes we even change each and every minute. So just because I saw you last week, I have no expectation that you're going to be the same person then that you are now because life happens and things happen. Um, especially when trauma is involved. Our moves can shift and change rather quickly. So um, did I touch on everything that I wanted to share? I believe that I did. I believe that I did. So that is it on creating safe space during a coaching session, during a Reiki session today. I hope that I left you with some things to incorporate in your practice uh, and in your day-to-day -day life, just checking in and grounding yourself what's going on around you, how is that affecting you, and what are some choices that maybe you took off the table. So this Thursday, I will be on for part two, and I will be talking about managing your mindset through the transition uh, during and after sessions. So if you have more questions on creating safe space, creating sacred, sacred space, either in your practice or in your daily life, if you feel comfortable, I invite you to post the comments below. If not, feel free to connect with me directly at RitaJohnston.com. That is R-E-I-T-A-J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N. So thanks so much. I will chat with you on Thursday.